Welcome back to the Ancestral Findings Podcast. Do you find understanding how Easter's date is calculated yearly difficult? You are not alone. Most people would not know if they did not check their calendars or search the internet. However, there is a way to do it manually. Let me explain how Easter's date is determined and why it is calculated this way. Easter is on a different date each year. It can get confusing. So, how can you determine when Easter will be each year, and why does the date change every year? Here are your answers. Easter is what is known in early Christian celebrations as a movable feast. This means it does not fall on a fixed date every year, at least not on the two most commonly used calendars in the past 2,000 years, the Gregorian and the Julian calendars. These calendars follow the cycles of the sun and the seasons. Instead, Easter's date each year is based on a lunisolar calendar, which follows the cycles of the sun and moon. The Hebrew calendar is an example of a lunisolar calendar. Easter was celebrated by the different early Christian sects on different dates determined to be the most authentic one by each sect. The First Council of Nicaea, which was held in 325 AD, was the first Christian council to establish any rules for Easter. The council mandated that it be based on the Jewish calendar and that the date for Easter had to be uniform among all the Christian sects worldwide. That was all the council had to say on the matter. It did not give a date on which Easter was to be held. Only all denominations had to celebrate it on the same date. The actual computing of the date for Easter took centuries to work out, and it was not without controversy along the way. Another thing the council did not specify was that Easter had to take place on a Sunday. This ended up not mattering because almost all Christian sects at the time already celebrated Easter on Sundays. This tradition was maintained as all of Christianity tried to work out when to celebrate this holiday. Western and Eastern Christianity ended up coming up with their own calculations for when to have Easter, despite the universality decree of the Council of Nicaea. Western Christianity uses the Gregorian calendar these days, and with this calendar, Easter always falls on a Sunday between March 22nd and April 25th, usually about seven days after the full moon. In Eastern Christianity, the Julian calendar is used, at least for religion, if not for civil purposes. There is a 13-day difference between the two calendars between 1900 and 2099. Currently, the Julian calendar has Easter falling between April 4th and May 8th, usually several days later than the full moon, relative to the Gregorian calendar. The first official method for computing Easter was written by the Venerable Bede in 725. Bede wrote that the holiday should fall on the Sunday following the full moon, which falls on or after the equinox. Yet Bede was not following church rules in a precise way when he wrote this. He was referring to something called a paschal full moon, which is not the astronomical full moon, and it is the astronomical full moon the church recognizes for the purposes of computing Easter. The paschal full moon is basically the 14th day of a lunar month on a calendar. Also, the church date of the equinox is always March 21st, whereas the astronomical equinox can fall on that date or the two days prior to it. Is this confusing yet? It gets even more convoluted with different religious, civil, and astronomical calendars involved. In determining the date of Easter, all Christian churches use the 21st of March as their starting point, as it is the church equinox. They use this date to find the next full moon. The Eastern churches use the Julian calendar to find it, and the Western churches use the Gregorian calendar to find it. Because both calendars are slightly different, March 21st on the Julian calendar is April 3rd on the Gregorian calendar. The lunar cycles are four to five days behind the ones on the Gregorian calendar, further complicating computing Easter between the two church regions. Lunar years contain 30-day and 29-day lunar months, alternating with a slightly different month, similar to February in a leap year, to bring the lunar cycle in line with the solar one. January 1st to December 31st is considered a solar year. Each solar year has a lunar month that begins with a church new moon, which falls between March 8th and April 5th, and is designated as the Paschal Lunar Month for that year. 
Easter has been designed over the centuries since the Council of Nicaea to be on the third Sunday in that year's Paschal Lunar Month, also sometimes described as the Sunday after the 14th day of the Paschal Lunar Month. This is how the date of Easter is computed today, and has been that way since at least the mid-1700s. It was a date that was often debated before that. Easter has been celebrated in some form almost since the beginnings of Christianity, and it was an undisputed church tradition by the late 2nd century. Various Christian sects often came into conflict with the church in Rome once Rome adopted Christianity over the date of Easter. Still, these were usually peacefully tolerated by each other, with only a few brief and quickly abandoned attempts by Roman bishops to excommunicate churches using different methods for calculating Easter than the primary church in Rome. While the method of calculating Easter has changed several times over the centuries, it has always been based in some way on the moon cycles and, most importantly, the Paschal full moon. Beginning in the 20th century, there have been some proposals for a fixed date for Easter, usually the Sunday after the second Saturday in April. There has been support for this among most denominations, but proposals have yet to be implemented thus far. Until one is making Easter a fixed date, we will have to continue computing it a holiday in a the old-fashioned way by calculating the third Sunday in the Paschal lunar month of the year, either on the Julian or Gregorian calendar. Or you can look at your smartphone or the calendar on your wall to make it easy. Thank you for listening and subscribing to the Ancestral Findings podcast. For additional resources, visit ancestralfindings.com. You can download a free ebook, request a free genealogy lookup, and even participate in our weekly historical postcard giveaway. If you want to support us in more ways, consider supporting us on Patreon or PayPal. Every contribution helps to keep the lights on. From all of us at Ancestral Findings, Thank you for being an integral part of our family history community since 1995. I hope you have a wonderful day, and as always, happy searching.